Hello everyone, this video lesson is intended for the discussion of the lesson about illustrating fractions, decimals, and percentage. At the end of this video lesson, you are expected to illustrate fractions, decimals, and percentage in real-life situations and applications. To begin, let's discuss fraction in real-life situations. We have here a word problem stating that in ABM 11B, 4 over 5 or 4 fifths of the class population are very good in dancing. So how many percent of the population are very good in dancing? So here are the steps. First step is to divide the numerator by its denominator. So we have here 4 divided by 5 is equal to 0 0.8. And we are going to multiply the decimal number to 100. So 0 0.8 times 100, that is equal to 80. Then we add the percent sign for it to become a percentage. And therefore, 80% of the class population are very good in dancing. Example number two. So the problem here is just the same with the previous one, but there is a value specified for the total number of students in the class. So we have here, there are 45 students in ABM 11B. Four-fifths of their class population are very good in dancing. The question is, how many of them are very good in dancing? So same step. We're going to divide the numerator by its denominator. We have 4 divided by 5 is equal to 0 0.8 and multiply that to 100. Then it becomes 80 plus percent sign that is 80%. For us to solve, to identify the exact number of students that are very good in dancing, we must get the decimal point number of 80%, which is 0 0.8, and multiply that to the total number of students in the said class. So we have here 0 0.8 times 45. 45 is the total number of students in ABM 11B. So by multiplication, that is equal to 36. And therefore, there are 36 students in ABM 11B who are very good in dancing. Next example. So last Wednesday, Asha took the online quiz in Earth and Life Science. And she got 17 over 20 of the questions correct. What is her score in decimal form? Alright, so the step is to divide the numerator by its denominator. So we have here 17 divided by 20 that is equal to 0 0.85. Okay, so for us to know what is the score rate of ASHA? Then we must convert 0 0.85 to its percent form. So that is by multiplying it to 100. So 0 0.85 times 100 is equal to 85%. And therefore, ASHA's score is 0 0.85 in decimal form, which is equivalent to 85% which also means that she passed the online quiz. So don't forget to put or to write the conclusion after you get the right answer. Next. So we have your example 4. Dominic spent 11 20th of his savings for a new t-shirt. If he has saved 1,250 pesos, how much did he spend for the t-shirt? Okay, so we have here... First thing to do is to convert the fraction into a decimal form. We have here 11 divided by 20 by division that is equal to 0 0.55. And then this decimal number, the quotient, must be multiplied to the amount being saved by Dominic. So that we have here 0 0.55 times 1,250 and that is equal to 687.50. And therefore, Dominic spent 687 pesos and 50 centavos for his new t-shirt. Okay, so that is the interpretation. Next in line, we have here decimal in real-life situation. Now we have here example number one. The problem is, in 2018, a school has a total of 356 graduates. There were 182 boys among the graduates. The task is calling us to express the number of boys who graduated in terms of fractions. So why fraction and why not decimal? So remember that applying decimal in real-life situations is not really different from applying fraction in real-life situations. So as you recall from our previous examples, uh, when you were asked to compute for the fraction part of a certain whole number or amount, 
the very first process you need to perform is to convert the fraction value to decimal form. So now, to do this, so let's now first find what is the decimal value of that. So that can be done by dividing 182, the number of boys, to 356, which is the total number of graduates. So we have here 182 divided by 356, that is equal to 0 0.51. So now for the fractional form, we can simply write 182, the number of boys, as the numerator and 356 as the denominator. So we have that 182 divided by 356. And then we can simplify them. We can divide both numerator and denominator by 2, and that is equal to 91 over 178. So 0 0.51 and 91 over 178 are all equal. This is the decimal value, and this is the fractional form. The decimal form and the fractional form. So our conclusion would be, Therefore, there were 91 over 178 boys who graduated from a school in 2018. So as you can see, if we use 0 0.51 as a value here in our conclusion, then it's not good to be heard, right? So that's why we use fract the fractional form instead, okay? Next, we have here example number two. So out of 35 students in a classroom, 28 are boys and the rest are girls. Our task is to express the number of girls as a fraction of the number of boys. So in our given, the values are 35, the total number of students, and 28 as the number of boys. So the number of girls are unknown, right? So the first thing to do is to subtract 35 from or to 28. So 35 minus 28 is equal to 7, and therefore 7 is the number of girls in a class. And since we are going to express the, this number as a fraction of the number of boys, and therefore this must be our numerator, and 28, the number of boys, must be our denominator. Okay, so we have here 7 over 28, and since both number 7 and 28 are divisible by 7, then we divide both of them. 7 divided by 7, that is equal to 1. 28 divided by 7, that is equal to 4. And thus, our final answer is 1 fourth. And 1 fourth is also equal to 0 0.25 in decimal form. Our conclusion must be, therefore, there were 1 fourth girls in the classroom in terms of the number of boys. So that's our conclusion. This time, let's talk about percentage in real life situations. Example number one. So during the enrollment period for school year 2018-2019, a private school in Bataan has a total of 300 enrollees. The graph shows the percentage of enrollees by gender. 38.7% of the enrollees are boys, while the 61.3% are girls. What are the actual number of enrollees by gender? So with this problem, let's uh, deal with the first percentage which talks about the enro boy enrollees. So we have to write 38.7% that is equal to 0 0.387 in decimal form. So how that happen? Simply because we move the decimal point to places going to the left and we have to write 0 on its left side. That's why 38.7% is equal to 0 0.387. And then with that, we have to multiply the resulting decimal value to 300, the total number of enrollees, so we can find out the exact number of boy enrollees. So that is equal to 116.1. Since we're dealing about person, then there is the decimal value for that. So we have to round it off to the whole number, the nearest ones. So that is equal to 116. And with this value, we can have to use this to find out how many are girls. So we have here 300 minus 116, and that is equal to 184. So we can also reverse this one. We can so deal first with the percentage of the girl enrollees followed by the boys. So they are just the same. So our conclusion would be, Therefore, there are 116 boys and 184 girls enrolled in a private school in Bataan. Next problem we have here, Jasmine budgets her 25,000 pesos monthly earnings as follows. 
For food, she allotted 34% For transportation, 12% For utilities, 16% For health insurance, 15% For monthly allowance, 18% And for savings, 5% So our test here is to compute how much does Jasmine spend in each item in her budget. To answer that, we have to compute the exact amount on each item. So to compute, we must convert first the percentage into decimal and then multiply it to the monthly earnings of 25,000 pesos. So here are the steps. So we have here the following. So if we're going to add the percentage here allotted on each item so that is equal to 100 percent so let's begin with the food so let's first convert 34 percent to its decimal form that is by moving the decimal point so a whole number guys that that has a decimal point on its right side so automatically here is the decimal point located and then we have to to move that two places going to the left. So 1, 2, then we add 0. So therefore, 34% is equal to 0 0.34, and then we multiply that to 25,000 pesos, and the product is equal to 8,500. Next, same step. So for 12%, 12% is equal to 0 0.12. Then multiply that to 25,000, then the product is equal to 3,000 pesos. For utilities, we have 16%, and 16%, guys, is equal to 0 0.16, multiply to 25,000 pesos, and that is equal to 4,000 pesos. Then for health insurance, 15%, that is equal to 0 0.15, then we have to multiply that to 25,000, then the product is equal to 3,750 pesos. And for the monthly allowance, we have 18% here. 18% is equal to 0 0.18. Then multiply that to 25,000 pesos, the monthly earnings. And the product is equal to 4,500 pesos. And lastly, for the savings, she allotted 5%. And 5% is equal to 0 0.05 in decimal. Then multiply the 25,000 pesos in her monthly earnings. And that is equal to 1,250 pesos. So and for us to check whether our answer is really correct, then we must add all of these values. And that is equal to 25,000 pesos, which is equal to just mean monthly earnings. Okay, and what would be our uh, conclusion? So our conclusion must be, therefore, just mean allocated 8,500 pesos for food, 3,000 pesos for transportation, 4,000 pesos for utilities, 3,750 pesos for health insurance, 4,500 pesos for monthly allowance, and 1,250 pesos for savings. So that is the whole process of, you know, of identifying what are the exact amount that just mean allocated on each item. Okay, so that is, that's it. So I, would, I just want to thank you everyone for listening and for paying attention. So I am hoping that you really understand the flow of our discussion. So I hope I help you with your learning. Thank you so much.